This is the 24th video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. In this video, we're going to install and configure an application onto our NAS called Audio Station. Audio Station will create a location on our NAS where we can store a library of music files. This library can then be accessed and shared over our home network via a web-based application. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the process for installing Audio Station from within Package Center. Then after installing Audio Station, we will review where Audio Station stores our music library, along with configuring Audio Station so that it can be used by the users of our home network. In order to install and configure Audio Station, we first need to log into the Disk Station Manager using our administrator's credentials. From the DSM's desktop, we now need to select Package Center. When Package Center opens, we are shown a screen that displays all of the packages that can be installed onto this model of Synology NAS. In order to find the Audio Station package, we can use the provided filters. If we change the category filter from All Packages to Multimedia, Audio Station will become the first package listed. An alternative method for finding packages within Package Center is via the search bar. By typing Audio and then pressing Enter on the keyboard, the Audio Station package will once again be listed. Let's select Install and take a look at the process for installing this package onto our NAS. First, we need to select which volume we wish to install Audio Station onto. When we install the Audio Station package onto a volume, the Audio Station package will automatically create a shared folder which will be used as a repository for our music library. This new share will be created in the same volume that we use for the installation of the Audio Station package. So we need to ensure that we install Audio Station on a volume that has enough storage capacity for our library of audio files. In this example, as volume 2 was created specifically for multimedia files, and it is the larger of the two volumes that we previously created, it is for this reason that we will be installing Audio Station onto volume 2. When we select Next, we need to double check our settings. You can see that Audio Station will run after we install it onto our NAS. So let's select Apply. The Audio Station package is now downloaded and then installed onto our NAS. Once Audio Station has been installed, the Install button for Audio Station will change to an Open button. As we now need to configure Audio Station, let's close Package Center. First, we need to check the permissions of the music share that has just been created by Audio Station. If we open the control panel and under the File Sharing section, locate and select Shared Folder. From within Shared Folder, we can see a list of the shares created on our NAS. From within this list, you can see a folder called Music, which has been created on Volume 2. If we first select the Edit button, then select the Permissions tab, we can see which users or groups have access to the music share. If you remember back to a previous video, we created a number of user groups that were specifically designed to make assigning access permissions to network shares easier. So let's select Local Groups. Within Local Groups, you can see that only the Administrators group has access to the music share. However, we also have a group called Family Group. This group contains all of the members of a fictitious family that we created for this video series. In order to allow our fictitious family to have access to the files in Audio Station's music library, we simply need to check the tick box in the read-write column of Family Group. When we select OK, the access permissions for Audio Station's music share will be set. Next, from the sidebar, we need to locate and select the option Application Portal. 
you can see that under the Application tab, we have a list of the Synology applications we've installed. Next to Audio Station, currently nothing has been assigned as an alias. An alias is useful as it will allow Audio Station to load directly into a web browser, independently of DStation Manager. So let's highlight Audio Station and select the Edit button. Under the General tab, we need to set the option Enable Customized Alias. While we can use any alias we like, we will leave this alias set to its default of Audio. When we select OK, Audio Station is assigned its own alias. Next, using the sidebar and control panel, we need to select Privileges. While we have set the access privileges for the folder that Audio Station will use as its music library, we have not yet set the access permissions to the Audio Station application. This means that currently only the administrator's account has access to the Audio Station application. While we could use group permissions to allow the family group access to the Audio Station application, you can see that we have a third tab called Default Privileges. When we select Default Privileges, we are presented with an option that will allow all users of our NAS to have access permissions to the Audio Station application. As we have created user accounts on our NAS which are not included in the family group, by selecting this option, all users of our NAS will be able to access Audio Station. However, if a user is not part of the family group, they will not be able to access the Music Share folder, so they will be unable to add their music to the Audio Station library. When we select OK, Audio Station's access privileges will be set. Audio Station has now been installed and configured, so let's check that we can load the service. There are three ways that we can open Audio Station. The first is to open Package Center and then from the sidebar select Installed. Within Installed, you will find the Audio Station package. If we select Open, Audio Station will be displayed on the DSM desktop. Let's close Audio Station and look at the second way that we can open the Audio Station application. If from the DSM desktop we select the main menu, within main menu you can see an icon for Audio Station. If we select Audio Station, once again the application will load on the desktop of the DSM. The final method for accessing Audio Station is via its alias, so let's log out of DStation Manager. Now from the address bar of our browser, we need to enter the IP address of our NAS followed by a forward slash and the word audio. When we press enter on the keyboard, the Audio Station login screen will be loaded. We know that this is the Audio Station login screen because of this icon. Let's sign into Audio Station by using the account for one of the adults in our fictitious family. So to recap, in this video we installed and configured Audio Station. This was done by first locating and then installing the Audio Station package. With Audio Station installed onto our NAS, we then set access permissions to the music share that was automatically created as part of the install process for Audio Station. We then assigned Audio Station with an alias and set the application's access privileges. Finally, we tested that we could access Audio Station using the access privileges that we set. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at installing and configuring Video Station. Video Station is the second of the three multimedia packages written by Synology that we will be installing onto our NAS.